we have Dr. Josefina Romaguera, and she's going to tell us about treatment of vulvar, vaginal, penile, and perianal HPV lesions. I will be talking about treatment of vulvar, vaginal, penile, and HPV-related lesions. This is my disclosure. I do have some research project, and I'm part of a speaker program. First of all, when we talk about vulvar intrapetilial uh, Dysplasia. The natural history is really unclear. There is very limited data in terms of what happened to the untreated uh, vintry, and we have to take in consideration that the best treatment that we have available that could apply to all the countries will be basically removal of the visible lesions. As we know, most of these uh, vint uh, and vulvar cancer are associated to HPV. As you can see in this graph, VIN is mostly associated to HPV 6 and 11, and VIN 3 is associated to HPV uh, 16 and 18. When we talk about different treatment available and we review the literature, this is an article by Broshim, and in his report that most of the report we have are basically retrospective analysis of patient that has been followed uh, this patient for a long time. This specific uh, paper reported all the cases they followed for the whole year, and the best uh, response rate was when that it was a surgical remover. LIB was good at the beginning, but the recovery rate was high, was 70%, and there is several studies in which the Mickey mode has been used with a good response, but a high re uh, recurrence rate in most of the treatment. Another article that was very interesting was the analysis of uh, VIN3 in a meta-analysis that includes 3,322 cases that were diagnosed with VIN3. In this group, the mean age was 46 years, and the recurrence was the same after local excision and vulvectomy. The best predictor factor of recurrent risk was the negative margin, and uh, if patients were not treated, that they would include 88 cases, 9% of them will progress to invasive carcinoma. When we evaluated in this specific paper, the patients that were treated with surgical treatment were 1,921, and as you could see, vulvectomy, partial vulvectomy, and local excision have more or less the same recurrent rate. Very important that progression to invasive cancer was 6.5% in the patient that were treated. Progression to cancer in untreated patient was 9%. And the lower recurrence was, uh, was significant in the patient that have the negative uh, margin. Some report, uh, reported the use of cytophobia. At present, there is a, a trial in, in the Europe using phase two trial comparison, in comparison with imikimod. This medication specifically needs to be prepared because we don't have it available, and the side effects are usually associated to ulceration, basically most of the time to the area of the dysplactive lesion. Photodynamic therapy has been used. It's an investigational procedure. The clearance rate is 40 to 60%, and the data is similar to the local excision. The advantage of using this specific methodology is that it's easy to perform, shorter healing interval, and it preserves the normal morphology better than the other alternative. One of the limitations is that it cannot be used in pigmented and hyperkeratotic vein lesion because they respond very poorly to this technique. In conclusion, uh, we could say that the best treatment that we have is local excision, but we have to be careful because some of these uh, lesions are multifocal and it could cause a lot of uh, irreversible damage to the anatomy. The spontaneous radiation is very rare and we do need to have standardized pathology examination so that we could follow these patients uh, better because most of the retrospective studies are very limited in terms of the pathology report of the condition. When we talk to the, about vaginal intrapetilial neoplasia, in this specific case, the incidence is much lower, and at the same time, it usually affects most of, mostly the upper third of the vagina. The lifetime uh, probability of vine progressing to invasive cancer is 9 to 10%, and as we know, most of the teleological factors are, are high-risk HPV. We have to consider when we are treating patients the age of the patient, the comorbidity, and specifically the site of the disease and the closeness to the bladder and the rectum. 
When we talk about low-grade vine, we could just evaluate them uh, with observation, which is the best treatment, because 91% of this regression, uh, of this lesion regress, and especially if they are not, not associated to sin. We could use topical agents. They are excellent in terms of a conservative approach, easy of application, and outpatient uh, treatment. Another alternative is the cavitational ultrasonic surgical aspiration, which has been reported in the literature. These specifically have a recurrent rate after treatment of 20% at 4.5 years, and in a randomized trial comparing it to CO2 laser, the recurrent rate was similar. This study specifically included VIN and VINE uh, treatment with this specific uh, methodology. In the United Kingdom, when we talk about vine treat, the standard of care is chemotherapy. They, they use brachytherapy, excuse me. And uh, it has been reported in several areas with a very good uh, QR rate of 93%, more than 90%. This study by Guru Murthy uh, reviewed different articles. And as you could see, uh, all of the articles have uh, a limited number of patients. but in all of them, it coincides with the fact that excisional surgery is the best in terms of QR rate. Laser abrasion is good, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's less than surgical excision. And uh, radiotherapy has a very good response rate. 5 FU has been used, but the recurrent rate might be as, as low and f as high as for uh, 100%. So we could conclude that vein treatment is really a challenge. Progression of the high-grade lesion to malignancy seem, seems to be about 9 to 10%. And although vaginectomy and radiotherapy have more than 90% disease-free, they are not the first line of treatment because the complication associated to, do, to the treatment uh, limit the sexuality of the patient, and it, it could be a drawback. So that the best treatment should be conservative treatment with ablation and medical therapy. Let me talk a little bit about penal intrapetilian neoplasia, even though this is not my topic of interest. But uh, on review of the literature, definitely there is not uh, much report in terms of alternative of treatment in a long-term follow-up, even a short-term follow-up, comparing any of the techniques I'm going to talk about. The progression of the pin to invasive cancer seems to be very low. It has been reported to be 5 to 10 percent if the lesion is left untreated. And it seems that typing for the HPV uh, is uh, an alternative to assess which of the patients are at high risk of developing progression of the disease. Excisional biosim seems to be the best alternative for solitary lesion, but it's not an alternative for multifocal lesions, and we have to uh, Consider the fact that there is a high incidence of recurrence, and the limitation includes the scarred and the sexual dysfunction consequences. Cryotherapy is another alternative. It's good because it's available. It's familiar to most of the physician. But the disadvantage is that most of the time, it does not go up to the dermis, and it might not be as effective. 5 fluoroacyl treatment has been uh, reported, too. It, shouldn't be used in multifocal, multifocal lesions, and it is difficult to restrict the treatment to a specific area, limiting its use. Other alternatives that have been reported in the literature with very limited uh, numbers are interferon alpha 2A, radiotherapy specifically for carcinoma in situ in 11 cases with adequate response, laser vaporization, imiquid of 5%, and photodynamic therapy for superficial lesions. One of the things that we have to consider when we talk about lower genital tract is that many of these lesions are multicentric. And if you have a multicentric lesion, the possibility of having a recurrence is more higher. It's usually in the 43%. In fact, uh, when you have uh, a, a lesion of a CIN, the recurrence rate is 5 to 35, VIN is 10 to 50%, VINE is 10 to 42, as compared to 43% when we are looking at a multicentric lesion. Of all the factors that we that are evaluated in the literature, HPV positive after treatment has a 45% re recurrent rate as compared to 0% in HPV negative patient. So HPV typing should be one of the things that we could consider in terms of evaluating with lesion have a higher rate of being recurrent. Other refactor for recurrence are age, 
tobacco use, immunosuppression, the grade of the lesion, therapeutic modality that was used, and positive margin. In fact, if the positive margin are present, the recurrent raising cervix is around 46%, vulva 30%, and vagina 33%. Fluorescence diagnostic and photodynamic therapy uh, has been reported in several articles for the use of treatment in lower genital tract disease. Fluorescence diagnosis can be used to evaluate the area specifically, and photodynamic therapy is based on a photosensitizer mediated production of singlet oxygen. The benefit that this has is that it will identify the dysplastic and malignant uh, tissue and will selectively treat that area. So that in conclusion, HPV-associated lesion treatment, uh, we have a lot of therapy. Uh, this reflects the fact that we have a lot of things that we don't know, and, but, and we still don't have like a standard of care for most of this lesion because of the lack of the information and the clinical trials. We do have uh, most of the treatment or, uh, going to the attempt of physical removal of the lesion, and some of them produce inflammation to induce an immune response. Definitely the best treatment for all this lesion is prevention of the exposure to HPV, but as was said before, that is not as easy and practical. But definitely we have a very, uh, put, very reliable vaccine in terms of this area. And as you know, the quadrivalent vaccine that is available in some part of the world is very good to, for prevention of genital wart, carcinoma in situ, cancer, but is very good too for the prevention of the lesion of the vulva, vagina, and the anus in the woman and for the anus, anal and the pen, um, penil, penal, uh, in, in the, and the penal lesion. In the future, we are going to uh, be seeing a lot about therapeutic vaccine. A lot of it is being presented in this meeting, and there might be a role of the therapeutic vaccine for this lesion. We will have the nanovalent vaccine coming, and we definitely have to look into effective antiviral therapy to try to eliminate that virus. There are some studies using a modulator such as candida antigen for the treatment of, in, of lesions in the lower genital tract. And definitely, we have to take in consideration the needs of the treatment for immunocompromised patients. So that's my presentation. I hope that you learned a little bit from it. And I do have a lot of other slides that I will post in the presentation in the event that you want to have more information. Thank you for your attendance.